What's up guys? We are back with another Bandai Tamashi Nations review, but we're jumping back into the Meisho movie realization line. And it's been a, been a bit since I've touched on one of these, uh, but we're taking a look at one I couldn't pass up, the Ronin Mando, the Beskar armor version with Grogu 2-pack. Now there is a regular Mando, he was a P-Bandai release, and I, I won't say I missed him because I had every opportunity to get him, but I skipped him. So I had to jump on this guy. Uh, he comes, well, they come in kind of an oversized package for this line. It's still very similar to the rest, but it's just a little bit bigger. You've got a shot of the Mando and Grogu there on the front. You've got a shot of the Mando's helmet on the spine. And then the back of the box is kind of in typical Tamashi Nation's fashion, very much figure art style. Uh, you get a bunch of shots of the figure, how it can move, and then a bunch of the accessories uh, that it comes with. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our May Show movie realization, Beskar Mando with our little top knot Grogu down there. This guy is, this guy's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm very much, at this point, you know, having him out of the box, I'm a little bit, I wouldn't say upset, but annoyed that I didn't get the regular Mando. And this is, you know, the, the preferred Mando for me when it comes to deco and overall style, at least, well, as far as a normal Mando goes. But having both would have been cool. Uh, maybe I'll get him down the road. We will see. But for now, this is a great, great entry in this line, especially when it comes to Mandalorian stuff. So this line hasn't been all that active lately. I honestly can't remember the last time others came out outside of that first Mando. But I'm glad they decided to do this because armored characters in particular lend themselves really well to this style. And for the most part, I thought this line was really cool, and this guy is no exception. So, you know, let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. We're going to remove Grogu for now, because uh, he's he's really just an accessory. Uh, but this Mando moves pretty well. These these figures are not exactly figure art style when it comes to articulation. They're still their own thing, but they're a little bit similar. Uh, so we've got a head that can look up about this far. He can look down really, really good. Really nice tilt, and then you've, of course, got uh, full rotation there. You've got arms that go out at the shoulder. They will rotate around. You've got a butterfly joint. The pauldrons are on a like, cantilever thing on the hinge, actually, so they will move independent of the arm. So once you've got the arm posed, you can push it back up and sort of swivel it around as needed. We've got a swiveling elbow. It's only a single joint, though. You get better than 90, but not perfect. This is one of the areas where they kind of differentiate from what you would expect a figure arts, you know, another Tamashii Nation's offering to have. We've got uh, ball hinges at the wrist also. So you've got a little bit of up and down and then rotation. And of course, you can move it around if you need to. He does have this armor plate right here uh, by the whistlers that, that kind of gets in the way. So you're going to have some issues. Hands aren't the most mobile. We've got a, let me take the backpack off for now, just to get a better grip on him. We've got a single buck torso, basically. So this is where he's kind of locked down. You've got a little bit of bobble forward and backward, some tilt side to side, and then some rotation about this far. Not too bad, but he does have this armor plate right here, this thing that kind of gets in the way. So he's not super, super mobile at the torso. It's not too bad, but it's also... It's also not perfect. Put this back on. Now the legs are kind of normal. You've got a scabbard here, which does move to kind of get itself out of the way a little bit. Legs go out about this far. Not full splits, but they're pretty normal. More than he probably needs, honestly. They go forward about that far. They kick backwards really far, actually. You do have a thigh twist up there. It's hidden nicely by the all the plates here. We've got another uh, weird joint system though. So this is a double jointed knee, but it's really, really weird looking. And not, not in a way that's like aesthetically unpleasing to the eye. It's just an odd system. So it's a pinned lower joint with a pinless upper joint. And it works pretty nicely to kind of get itself up out of the way, considering this guy has really baggy thighs when it comes to those pants. So that's actually pretty nice. I do like that. And it's hidden really well, too. Like at face value, you know, looking head on, you really can't see much about that joint work. And then we've got uh, rotation at the ankle. You can see a slight cut right here, but it's hidden nicely by this little plate that shimmies. And then you've got rocker 
which is kind of minimal because of that plate also. And then you've got a little bit of hinge up and down. He does have toe articulation, which I find incredibly weird because there is this flat sole at the bottom of the feet. So the toe articulation does literally nothing that I can that I can tell. I mean, you might be able to get his foot up a little bit, but his, his ankles also don't move well enough to really require uh, toe articulation. So, so kind of weird. Uh, so I think he moves all right. Like it's not, it's not gonna change the game in any way, but it's also pretty normal for this line. These guys have always had some sort of limitations just based on their design. So overall, I'm pretty happy with what he can do without being too hyper-focused on what he can't. Because let's face it, this line is definitely about the aesthetic. There is no reason to make a samurai-inspired Star Wars line unless you're focused on what these end up looking like over anything. They're very much they're very much a form, slightly over-function kind of a line for me. And I, I think this one looks, just in particular, really fantastic. There are some definite standouts when it comes to the movie realization line. Uh, you know, Maul, the Boba Fetts, the Django in many ways still very much on par. The Mandalorians basically look really good in this line. And there's a lot of other figures that are also really nice and stand out. Phasma also looks really great in this line. Uh, this guy's probably my current favorite though. Again, I don't have a ton of these. I've only got a small handful. Uh, but this guy's definitely my favorite at this point. And I think he looks great. The Beskar styling on him is really nicely done. He's, he's lustrous, so he's got a shine to him. But he's also really dirty, which is kind of a thing that I can see working for this line, where he's in an actual working suit of armor. Uh, that, of course, gets some grit and some gunk and grime on it. So you've got all of this little uh, tight little design work and sculpting in there. And it's all kind of uh, pitted and worn. And then it's got some gunk and nice wash all over it. So it doesn't look like it's, you know, brand new, which your mileage may vary on whether or not that bothers you. But I think it looks really nice here. Uh, just tons and tons of little sculpt work all over. So all these little flaps and panels of armor, uh, all of this stuff, you know, even some of this stuff down here can move like this piece right here. It's not going to help you pose him, but it does, uh, does move a little bit. And then you've got this sort of leather work design down here for things like the boots, which also has its own little uh, patina to it to make it look worn and slightly older. You've got all like the Telltale Star Wars canisters all over him on his on his boots, they're on his belt, they're on his bandolier. Uh, we've got, you know, all of his uh, gauntlet weaponry is sculpted in there. It very much looks like old ironworks when it comes to, you know, this era and style of design. So it's also got a little bit of a worn nature to it and just a little bit of a, a patina and a, uh, and a finish on it that makes it look well used. The backpack, the jetpack, is a separate piece. You know, I guess you could consider it an accessory. I'm probably going to use it at all times, but you know, it's you don't necessarily have to though, right? So you don't have to. You can see the back here a little bit better when it's off. So you've got more of this armor plating, more canisters. You can't have too many canisters, right? And the remnants of that uh, bandolier. Also more of his actual inner armor underneath the jetpack itself. But this thing uh, is definitely one of the cooler aspects of the figure. I do have one little nitpick thing about it is that I wish that the the peg for the actual backpack itself went into the back a little bit better. It doesn't seem to be long enough. Uh, like it'll pop just, it'll just pop right out. So, you know, you might have some trouble with that. It's not the biggest thing. It's certainly not a huge uh, negative for me, but it's something to note. But the backpack does have a lot of detail. And what I really like about it is the same thing that I like about the rest of the armor, really all of the wear and tear. So the actual thrusters are really discolored. In comparison to every other bit of armor on this figure, the thrusters are really, really like, uh, they're just worn. They're kind of, they've almost got a slight like turning to rust type of look to them. They're really black at the bottom and then they're incredibly gunky all the way around compared to what is really a pretty clean jetpack otherwise, but there's a ton of sculpt in that thing. Uh, there's just great stuff. And of course, what I should mention, uh, you've got your mud horn just slightly hidden right there because it has to be there. I, I just really think this guy looks great. I mean, again, I get this for his aesthetics, for what he looks like and what he kind of represents on his shelf, just something a little bit different when it comes to Star Wars, but also something that you could maybe throw in with other lines that have a, a, a samurai or ninja leaning. So so he is uh, he's definitely a cool looking figure and then he's topped off with a really fantastic helmet. Again, I think the, the Mandos 
lend themselves really nicely to this design and and well the mando is is no exception the helmet looks fantastic it's still clearly a mandalorian helmet while also having a lot of this telltale uh, you know feudal japan samurai style leanings with all the rivets up there and the plating that runs down the sides the the visor in particular i think looks great the way they kind of translated the normal shape into something a little bit more angular I, I think it looks really cool it makes him look very menacing also so yeah i mean for a line that is very heavy heavily focused on the looks, I think they nailed the look pretty well. Now as far as accessories goes, this set has a pretty decent spread and of course this is, you know, like a more deluxe two-pack kind of thing that does include another relatively well-articulated figure, actually. So uh, we've got some hands to start with. You've got just a few. We've got gripping hands. You get a set of gripping hands, and you get a set of trigger finger hands. So nothing else, no style pose or anything like that. I kind of wish he had a style posey hand. But not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, we do get his uh, pistol. You know, of course, you get the jetpack also. We've talked about that. Uh, I do find that this thing is very, very difficult to get out and into this holster. Like, as you can see, I am struggling to get this. There we go. It's mostly, I think, because of this little sight on the end. But this thing looks pretty good. You know, it's got like a wooden stock. And then you've got kind of a gunmetal-y color with a little bit of a gunky finish to it, so it does look like it's been a little bit used, but it's like a very product-of-the-time kind of thing, so kind of flintlock-style pistol. We get a sword because, of course, he's supposed to be a samurai, and the one thing I wish was different about this set is that I wish this was more obviously the Darksaber. It makes a lot more sense that way, just to keep it in line with the show's continuity. I'm happy that he includes the sword, don't get me wrong, but I feel like this could have just as easily have been the Darksaber. You know, just make the blade black and I'd probably be just as happy. He does come with his rifle. This is probably my favorite thing in the set. Well, definitely is, I would say. And this thing looks fantastic. There's a lot of texture, so it's got like a very defined wood grain uh, finish for the stock. And then just the overall size of this thing. I mean, you know, this figure's not small. And this thing is just as tall as he is. Great uh, kind of gunmetal-y color, some gold accents on there. Just overall, really, really nice sculpt. Like, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. And again, more of that sort of product of the of the era that they're going for here. Now he, of course, does come with Grogu. And this little guy's a lot more articulated than I thought he was. He's still kind of like a little slug figure. Like you can't do a lot with him, but he does move. So you've got a head that moves up and down. You've got some swivel. Your arms can rotate. I will uh, mention that I had to heat him up, and I haven't had to do that for a Tamashi figure in a long time. So the arms will swivel. Uh, he's got really nice waist. So it's a ball peg in there. So it's a crunch and then a swivel and then you've got legs that will move sort of in and out they don't they don't do a great deal but they do bobble around inside of there it's really all about his look though i mean this guy looks fantastic it's still very much a normal grogu kind of figure like he's not super stylized but he is like you can tell he's not regular uh, so you've got you know like these uh, sort of robes on him skin tone looks nice he's got kind of a normal expression but what it's all about is this Absolutely adorable little top knot that he's got there. That kind of cinches it all and kind of makes him seem a little bit more era specific, but I think that's just the best thing about him. I absolutely love that. It's it's really, really goofy, but it does work. So you've got him, and then we've got this. So we get the pram too, and this is pretty crazy. So it's very much, again, another product of the era that they're going for. So it's like a traditional cart, just a wooden cart. The wheels do move. Uh, you've got bamboo piping all over it for the handle and then for the side rails here. But you've got what is basically the pram from the show uh, that sits inside of it. It's kind of like a bone white with some brown wash on it. And then you've got these sort of inner, uh, inner cushioning for him. And then Grogu can just sort of sit in there. You can kind of get him to lay back too uh, if you need to. Kind of go, go him in there like that. He doesn't come with like a blanket or anything to put over top of him. And he doesn't get any of the toys either. I'm not too upset about that. You know, I tend to lose little stuff like that. But I think this is great, you know, for for a set to just knock this out right in one go, I'm very happy. You know, I, I don't like when they when they make a set with just the Mando and then no Grogu and then you have to get Grogu later in a different set or they need to go through and give you three, four sets just to get the pram. You know, they did it all in one go. It's all here. It's a little bit more expensive than normal, but you don't have to you don't have to worry about it later. You're you're done. It's a one and done kind of thing. So I'm pretty happy that this thing uh, came out so you can, you know, have your Mando push, push his boy around, have like a a daddy's day out kind of situation on your shelf. So yeah, overall, very, very happy with this. I think that's obvious at this point. I'm, I'm really a fan of this line. You know, I say that despite not having ever really heavily gotten into this line, I'm a fan. I do like this aesthetic. I've just never really found a way to integrate a lot of this into my collection, but I couldn't 
pass up Amando. And I'm really happy that they really just knocked him out of the park. I do wish that I had the regular one to go along with him, but I'm really happy to have the Beskar version because I do prefer that look. And I think they really uh, nailed it as far as making that suit of armor into a more feudal Japanese style suit of armor. The colors look good. The sculpt is great. He comes with not the most amount of accessories, but he comes with basically everything I really want. I do wish that sword was more dark sabery, but otherwise I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this box. Grogu looks great. It's a really cool idea with how they managed to integrate the pram as well. So that's going to do it for this look at the Bandai Tamashi Nation's Meisho Movies Realization Beskar Mandalorian and Grogu. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.